Welcome again, everybody, to the Idea Me Show, the show that profiles the human beings behind the really big ideas that are shaping our world and inspiring future creators and for all those that like really great stories. Uh, I'm Ira Pastor, your health, aging, and longevity ambassador with you today. So today we are going to take a little journey uh, from where I'm located here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, United States, across the Atlantic Ocean to the continent of Africa, uh, specifically to Lagos, Nigeria. Um, you know, Africa is the world's second largest uh, country by most uh, surface area and population, uh, comprised of 54 different countries about 12 million square miles, uh, 1.2 billion people. Uh, Africa uh, as a group has a little over $2 trillion nominal GDP with an export portfolio predominantly based on raw materials focused on energy, mining, and agriculture. Uh, but unbeknownst to many, you know, on my specific topics related to uh, health and health technologies, you know, throughout the 20th century, Africa uh, was a source of many bioproducts and technologies responsible for the, the growth of the modern pharmaceutical industry as we know it today, uh, from various uh, natural products or sort of ethnobotanical derived pharmaceutical sources that made their way into sort of the, uh, the discovery and development processes for new drugs, as well as the origin of the world's first pregnancy test back in the 1940s. Uh, continuing along this theme into the 21st century, we see a lot of really interesting activities going on on this front, uh, from the world's first uh, 3D printer in their ear transplant, which just recently occurred in South Africa a few months ago, uh, to the testing of various uh, Ebola antibody products in Central Africa, as well as the development of novel malaria diagnostics. Uh, however, you know, despite decades of effort in both you know, areas of technology transfer and indigenous innovation in biotech, as well as many other areas, um, you know, as well as this continent that is bustling with an abundance of potential, you know, Africa in many ways you know, gets portrayed in the media here in the West as sort of this continent that is left behind in terms of its technological development. Um, so on today's show, you know, really breaking out of this theme, uh, we are going to be speaking uh, with Mr. Osinakachi Okumakalu, uh, who is the founder and chairman of the Transdisciplinary Agora for Future Discussions, uh, T-A-F-F-D-S for short, uh, which is going to be holding a revolutionary conference entitled the International Conference of Techno-Scientific Awareness in Solving 21st Century Problems. It's going to be occurring next month in Kigali, Rwanda from October 7th through the 11th. Uh, the conference is going to be taking place at the University of Rwanda. It's going to be bringing together industry experts, inventors, policymakers, scholars, futurists, and transhumanists. Uh, from all over the world, and they're going to be converging there in Rwanda to brainstorm, exhibit, exchange ideas, uh, promote innovations, and ultimately provide solutions for a whole new set of direction for the technological future of Africa. Uh, Osinakachi is a, both a strategic planner, a team builder, a visionary, an inspirational speaker, and a humanitarian, and he has degrees uh, in business administration, from Nigeria and philosophy from Italy and uh, the discipline of virology from Nepal. Uh, he is the author of two books, one entitled Conquering the Beast, Fear, a Philosophical and Phil Psychological Approach, uh, and the first stage of the Fearologist. Uh, Sinagachi, thanks so much for coming on the show this morning. Thanks for that wonderful uh, apt introduction. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Let's start with you. And typically, you know, on this show, uh, we give you the floor. Uh, our guest to talk about you, basically you, your background, you know, where you grew up, how you got interested in business, how you got interested in philosophy, and ultimately how, you know, what put you on this path for mobilizing uh, these sort of global forces for technological and we'll call it transhumanism, uh, transformation of Africa now in 2019. I'm Akumakalo. I'm from the eastern part of Nigeria, um, Abia State to be precise. So um, we, uh, I'm from the Igbo tribe. So as, as you know, the Igbos, we are unique. We are businessmen, women. We, we love 
invention, innovation. We like making experiments. And, uh, and uh, when I finished my secondary education, I, I wanted to study law. Mm -hmm. So because of uh, uh, the abuse and the miscarriage of justice in Nigeria, I wanted to study law. But uh, I was not able to get admission into a Nigerian university. So I was uh, tuned to get gain admission uh, to study business admin in a polytechnic. So from there, after my studies in polytechnic, I got, uh, I got a job offer um, work to work with the first bank. So to work with the first bank. So, but I was not getting fulfillment there because, you know, it's just like a routine job. You take your bed, you go to the job, to the bank, and you work all day. So it wasn't some. It was something that makes my life looks clumsy and they somehow um, uh, linear in nature. So I had to say, okay, I don't need that. But you know, there's this um, perception that people have after university. You need to get start working, make money, and help in solving problem in the family and all that, but that wasn't my main vision. Mm -hmm. And because I believe that you are settled and those around you are not settled, I think no one is settled. Because those who are not settled will, will also disrupt what you are doing in the society. So I said, okay, I, I, want, to, I want to study more to understand what the world is actually and where we are heading to. So I said, I need to study philosophy, the model of all sciences. Mm -hmm. And I started, I think I gained admission, the Claration Institute of Philosophy, Maryland, Nekede Uwere Imo State. So, and that's the, one of the best philosophy uh, institute, if not in Africa, uh, uh, if not in Africa. But I know philosophers, from that institute, the best philosophers can compete with anybody in the world. And, and I, I, re I recommend anyone who wants to study philosophy in Nigeria or in Africa to apply to the Claritian Institute of Philosophy in Maryland. So after that, after my study, uh, during my study, I, I met um, the Shuba, the Nepalese philosopher. Mm -hmm. uh, who connected me to uh, Aroma Ike Fisher from Canada, Calgary, Canada. So we started, we started talking about philosophy of fearism, mm -hmm. how life is conducted, directed, and controlled by fear. So it was something that was interesting. We started talking about eco fearism and all that. We started talking about the place of fear in the existential struggle of the human person. So mm -hmm. we started thinking of why are people between love and fear, which one is stronger? Okay, why are we advancing in technology? It's because of uh, fear of this or that. So I try to make a just position to know the place of fear, the role of fear uh, in the existential struggle of the human person. We got to discover also that, the, that psychologists, sociologists, and some other thinkers have been misleading people and their definition of fear. So people see fear as fox evidence, fear in real. Some define it as a negative emotion, which right. we say, no, fear is not a negative emotion. You don't just say that fear is a negative emotion without, um, it's, it's just like committing a fallacy of composition, using the part to justify the whole. So you're not considering the good things about fear, but it is fear, you, you don't consider or realize that fear is a motivator, it's a great motivator. Or do you think that fear is, lives inside of the human person? No, we see fear as something that is outside, that when perceived, it reacts, it flashes mm -hmm. in your mind and gives you an impression. And now it behoves on the subject uh, of fear, which is the human person, who now decide how to direct this emotion that's flashing to the mind. Mm -hmm. So it's just an aspect of emotion you don't just say, oh, it's a negative. So the way you direct this emotion determines how it will drive you in life and how it controls your action and inactions. 
So that is about my moving um, theory. So while I was writing these, um, writing articles, reading, studying, combining some of all my researches and all those things, I was like, okay, I had two, I had uh, three uh, important friends that helped that, that we would flock together during our, our philosophical time. Mm -hmm. So this August is Chuku. So we know him for talking about futurism, transhumanism, nanotechnology. And we know him for talking about oh, very soon, I will not die again. Very soon, I will, I'm going to live forever. Very soon, mm -hmm. you people are here going to church, doing this, but I'm going to live forever. Maybe you people will die, but as a friend, I'll get, help you with some of the chips so that you will, uh, I will still have you people around. So mm -hmm. he was saying this because he listened um, so much of podcasts, he listened so much of, he, uh, of uh, um, audio books. He, he was privileged. He, he owns, he was the only one that had um, iPhone and iPad gadgets among us. So he, he had access to some of all this information. Mm -hmm. um, he found that he will tell you, you need to read this book. You need to read this book. So he bought the book of uh, Yuvano Harari, uh, Sapiens, Homer Rose. He said, you need to read this book. This book, it, it, it will change your life. After reading this book, you don't know that it this them. This is the book that Bill Gates read, this person read, this session. You need to read it so that you will understand where we are going in sure. the world. So you, you don't need to be studying some of all these dry philosophies and all that. So you need to um, study what is pragmatic in, sure. in, in, in reality. So we're just like, but then I personally, I was interested in my theorism study, but secretly, I was reading those books. <laughs> I was reading those books secretly. So I said, oh, um, I, came, I came in contact with uh, um, the, the works of um, uh, Aubrey de Grey. Mm -hmm. So somehow unique. He's, he brings crazy ideas. His sure. ideas are crazy. When, when you listen to him speak, it sounds crazy. He says things that are not realizable. So I think that is, that is uh, what we really need in this world. We need people with crazy ideas. We need people who can say things that we, will make someone go sleepless, make you think, make us use our brains and mm -hmm. know how to help humanity. So listening, uh, reading his words, and one thing I like with him is he's very humble. He's accessible. He's accessible. But sure. I've tried to... I will try to assess the likes of Peter Germandis. I don't know the, 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 the nature of the bureaucratic bottlenecks everywhere. Sure. So, but when I, I said, um, one day I had a few, I said, okay, let me give you a try. I, I, I sent you a request on LinkedIn. I sent you a message. After two weeks, you didn't respond. I said, I'll try another place. I tried on Facebook. I got you. <laughs> I sent you an email. I sent again. I sent twice. And you responded. So I said, okay, I've gotten another friend too. So <laughs> these are the things that motivate me. For instance, when you read the transhumanist or the transhumanist party agenda, mm -hmm. or when you read when you read the politics of abundance, right? Or some of these abundance theories, you get to understand why people are thinking in that direction now people actually let's say let me come down to my table in africa now we have leaders who don't know what is at the moment mm -hmm. by that i mean analog leaders leading in a digital age. It's somehow right, right. crazy. They don't really understand the reality of the moment. They don't know how to fuse things. When you tell them that oh, we, we need to build a cryonics institute, they say, are you crazy? You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so the, 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 their, their immediate problem is finding a way to loot the government treasury and enrich the families and all that, and friends. So they don't really understand Government is for the common good of the people. Mm -hmm. Now, when you come to Africa, many persons 
would have died of diseases, infection, and all of that. Sure. But we have African scientists, African scientists who knows how to cure some of all these things, but their method is not all that scientific. So that is my keen interest. If you ask them to give you an, an experimentary view or mm -hmm. a scientific model for which another person can do that and get same results, they don't really know how to. Because some of all these things, they are not label. They are not staged. They are not really defined. So we need to say, okay, we need to bring people that will say, it's time for us to make this methodic. Mm -hmm. It is time for us to improve on this. Sure. No science is completely complete. So there are, we, keep, we keep on improving because there is this principle of verifiability and falsifiability. Science is not dogmatic. We keep improving. So, Absolutely. So these are the things that motivated me. Now, the, the most crazy aspect of it is this. You have someone who is ineducable. Not that the person is not educated, but is ineducable. Okay. And the one is your leader. And he, he can't even decide for himself not to talk of deciding for the society. And so now it becomes problematic. So I was thinking, I was thinking of a better way of conducting an election that is devoid of rigging. Okay. That is devoid of um, crisis. Like there is no time that election is conducted in Africa and there will not be any trace or record of death tolls. People must die. People must die. So mm -hmm. why must it be so? Must we continue to gather and vote in the 21st century? We can vote from our homes. We can vote from our homes. Mm -hmm. And as we vote, the results will be playing out. So we need to make advances. Our lands, I don't want Africa to suffer what Americans are suffering. Now, I don't know if you are an indigenous American, but I don't know if you can easily get a land, buy a land and build a house. No, it's not easy. Mm. So because we are farming, we make this, we make this. I want us to use, I want us to use America as a case study and make our environment, our society better and not just copying what is in America. We mm -hmm. need to look what works for us. What exactly. works for us. Exactly. Now, if we look, check out for what works for us, we can then say, okay, now since we have lands, undeveloped lands, we can also say it's time for us to start vertical farming. Let's start vertical farming instead of wasting some of these lands. Sure. Let's start inventing something that will help us to, um, to preserve uh, uh, to preserve our uh, oil, gas, mineral resources. Mm -hmm. Let us uh, start producing, um, uh, uh, um, let's say, water, water uh, generator, mm -hmm. uh, electric cars, and all that. We have people with the vision and the dream. So right. we can do that. Africans are very intelligent. What we like is the enabling environment. The large enabling environment to do this. So mm -hmm. these are the things, these are the factors that motivated me um, into picking interest in science, futurism, transhumanism, biotech, and all that. Excellent. So that is just that. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great intro. Um, you know, as you were, you were saying some of, of these things, you know, I was, I'm thinking obviously, um, and, and this is from a, an American perspective who, you know, I'm somewhat well-versed on Africa, but 
probably not as well <laughs> as you, but you know, I, I look at it, you know, 54 countries, um, a wide, let's say, range of wealth in terms, you know, you're in Nigeria, of course, where obviously they're very poor people, but they're some of the world's richest people there as well, uh, you know, based on the oil industry, obviously South Africa, diamonds, mining, um, Kenya, for other aspects of the economy. Um, so we see, you know, there's some countries in Africa extremely wealthy uh, or pockets of wealth and technology, others much less so. Can you talk just a little bit about today, your view, you know, what are the hot spots that you see for um, this, you know, say after the conference, of course, as, as your vision gets rolling, what are the hot spots? Are they the, the richer countries where there are more, you know, concepts of, a, uh, of investment in and, and some of these areas? Are there other countries that we may not be thinking of off the top of our heads that you think, well, I mean, this is uh, just like, you know, uh, you know, the U.S. is a you know, big company, a lot of technology going on, but there are smaller countries like Singapore, which, you know, technologically may move a lot faster. Are there pockets of countries in Africa that, you know, we might not be thinking of that may be like better hubs for some of this activity? What is your, give us sort of your breakdown. You don't have to obviously go across all 54 countries, but what do you see as some of the hot spots moving forward in the next five, 10 years? There is one thing I want people to really understand about Africa. Mm -hmm. Africa is richly blessed. Mm -hmm. And we know that. Sure. And Africa also, Africa is still suffering from what the colonial masters did mm -hmm. to them. Africa, the, the our colonial master really despoiled us. Just to use the word "despoiled," they, they actually despoiled Africa. And what Africa lacks, lacks is not just uh, this technological distant, uh, invention or innovation or all that. What the lack is what leadership problem, and that is why we need to think transhuman. We need to think about. The transhumanist, transhumanist party agenda and the manifest. We need to break some of all these knots so that visionary leaders mm -hmm. can step in. So, if you have a leader that is not futuristic, no matter your level of creativity, mm -hmm. invention or innovation, it won't work because these people they are not ready to separate politics from scientific inventions. Okay. They, they think everything is politics. Okay, take for instance what is happening between um, um, this uh, phone company, Huawei, and the uh, United States of America, this politics of that Facebook and their, um, or, or, or this, this other WeChat and all that. So we need to learn how to separate it, just as most people say that law and morality should be separated. So that is how technologically, te technological inventions and the politics should be separated. And so look at how can California transform. Mm -hmm. You know what, and, um, what California used to be in the past, based on history. But look at it now. Everyone wants to go to Silicon Valley. Right. Everyone wants to go. No one is interested in what is happening in Washington, D.C. anymore. So everyone wants to go to Silicon Valley. And so... That's just that. But I think, based on my research and all what, I think we, the country that I respect most now, I like the way the reason is Estonia. Estonia, people, they, I, I see them as underdogs when mm. it comes to technology. You see, what they think, like what Joannes um, the, 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 the CEO or founder of Sidekick, um, Sidekick with the dream of bringing back um, 5 billion um, digital humans to life. So 
It's crazy idea. So I love things like that. So when you look at their summits, the what they discuss there, you see, that is, you 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 pick interest. You like to visit Estonia. Now, when you come to Africa, mm -hmm. I think Rwanda is leading because their president is interested in getting what works for them. Okay. And how he structured the university is also, was also unique. So you look at this, you don't push education aside. You don't say when you are building, when you are writing your project, you don't talk about what you put in science and technology, education and all that. For researchers, you throw, them out, uh, um, uh, uh, you throw them out and you are interested in getting what we pay you money and what we loot and send to to um, United States of America, UK and all that. So, for instance, it's this happening like in Nigeria now. Most of our leaders don't take their medical treatment in the country, mm -hmm. especially the number one student. It's, it's somehow crazy. Right. And you shifting, shifting your internal, internally generated revenue outside, right. and it's it, it's crazy. Okay, right. now if you talk about the way Rwanda is going, they brought in uh, the, the, the 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 VC of uh, the University of Rwanda mm -hmm. is a scientist. Okay, he thinks nothing than science or he thinks is science technology science technology and that is what is invoked and that is what is in, in the what the society needs okay you see if there is any leader in africa that tries to make his country or her country to look superior or to build on what we help the country stands out. Mm -hmm. Most foreign politicians will try to clamp his efforts down. Mm. When you watch BBC, it's quite crazy. Look at what BBC News is saying about the university of, um, the, the president of Rwanda. Just take a look at it. What okay. they are saying. They are trying to they're trying to paint the man black. Now, when Muhammad Gaddafi, when Muhammad Gaddafi tried to transform Africa, he was among those who said, oh, we don't need to start, uh, we, we don't uh, need to be answering organization of African unity. Let's answer African Union. Let's have one currency. I'm going to make it unique. We're going to use gold to make the currency and place value on it and make it to be let's say more stronger than dollar and all that. They started planting political cube underground and this high is now is no longer there, was killed and all that. And you've seen how um, the country is, sure. Libya. You've seen. Now, same thing goes to Nigeria. Barack Obama literally championed the political um, movement that, that led to the removal of Gulok Eberjana, the only educated president we've ever had in mm. this country. So now, this one, the, 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 the current president is struggling to provide his elementary certificates. And you've seen how can you clamp down, make policies when you are not ready? Right. As big as the rest of America, they are still important. A bag of rice now in Nigeria is sold um, currently, as of yesterday, is sold to 17,000 plus naira. And so you check out Nigeria, one dollar is equal to 370 something naira. It's mm. crazy. Mm. In, 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 in uh, 19, 1997, to eight during uh, Abacha's regime. There was a time that one dollar, and there was a time that one dollar equals to one naira. This, this, this country. So we still 
existed. You know, there was a time during uh, Nam um, um era as the president of Nigeria, our economy was the best in Africa and number 50 in the world. Right. Then we never focused on petroleum and all that. We focused on what? We focused on agriculture. Right. So we had we have all these things. We have what it takes to move. The problem is, we you have the enabling environment. Right. You can talk and talk and talk, but when you are talking to people who are that that they don't understand anything, they right. don't want to understand what you are saying. It makes no sense. Okay. Now you, you see how. The society is moving. We are struggling with 3G network in Nigeria. Everything is an opportunity to exploit the masses. Someone will dupe the country. Someone will steal from the government $300 million. And nothing, and nothing will happen. No one will talk. And last year, they said a snake swallow that something million naira <laughs> in someone's office. Earlier this year, they said um, a chimpanzee, uh, a prayer or so, chimpanzee or a gorilla, so uh, some millions uh, in a nearby police station. So it's, it's something that <laughs> when you leave, in a society like this, that is why I, I don't find it funny listening to the news. Because unless I'm feeling sad and I want to have a comic relief, mm -hmm. I'll listen to some of the things that is happening and I go back to my comfort zone and continue reading and researching. Mm -hmm. So in Africa, there are persons whom I want the world to look at sure. what they are doing. Like when you talk of when you talk of uh, Atozang from the from Cameroon, I don't know if you heard of him. No. Uh, Atozang is the Cameroonian engineer okay. that developed the first um, handheld medical computer. Okay. Cardio part. Cardio part. So because of how the environment is, uh, so people uh, you can't easily take medical equipment to the interior parts of the country, he, he thought of creating this. You see, problem solving is the basic foundation of philosophy. The basic foundation of philosophy is problem solving. And that is why it's a model of all um, sciences and all that. So right. if he was like, oh, Let's blame the government. Let's wait until the government comes. Uh, it wouldn't have taken place. So I had to think out something and provide that mm -hmm. to the society. Mm -hmm. So you talk about <clears throat> the Congolese uh, Veron Manku, who invented the, the, the waste, uh, waste tablet that, uh, that, uh, that is a perfect competitor to the iPad to iPad in their country. And he also created the Elikia smartphone. It's also making web in the country. And I think if we unite in Africa, we can also say, okay, for now, let us text run some of all these devices with the ones that we've been importing and see if we can strengthen this and promote our, 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 our homemade uh, products. We can also say, just as the, the Nigeria innocent, innocent, the owner of innocent motors. Okay, sure. Yes, innocent motors. Mm -hmm. uh, we can say, okay, innocent Africans should patronize what he's doing. African presidents should also talk to talk to people and say, okay, let us make use of uh, let's test run and make use of his products and see if it will be good for us. I'm not saying that we should use the minimum as a standard, but there should be a test run. And we say, okay, 
this is what we, we are going to use. So we have Maurice Bessa, the, the Kenya that invented an anti-theft device. Mm -hmm. It's because of what is happening in the country. But why can't we say, okay, since he invented this, we can use it in governance. We can use this in banks. We can use this everywhere. We can use it to stop the, 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 the uh, we can use it to, uh, we can upgrade it and use it in stopping um, those who do uh, um, cyber crime, at, commit cyber crime activities, duping people, painting people's image black. Now, most people, if they receive an email from um, an Africa, or when you send someone a message, I say, where are you from? I say, from Africa. They say, who? I don't know. I need to be careful with this person. I don't know if he's trying to scam or trying to steal from me. Mm -hmm. But that's a single story. Right. Even whites, even whites are into, into this. So, let us just say African. So, all those things stops people, makes people have bad impression about um, others without considering the good side of the person. So it's somewhat bad. So um, recently, last month to hear about, Mecca Nelson, a Nigerian, uh, inverted uh, a water running power generator that uh, generates lights. And he talked about it in China's television. So he talked about it. I saw it was very nice. But do you know why? One thing. The society, even if you push that, uh, the society won't embrace it because some of them, they are making huge uh, money from the petroleum uh, business. So they are not interested. Okay, a politician imports generator. is one of the highest importer of generator and he's promising you steady power supply. We are still struggling. Okay, as big as... Um, um, as big as Nigeria, we are over 200 million in population. Mm -hmm. We are not using we are not using up to 10,000 megawatts. Mm. And that's 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 crazy, right? Please, and you you see the, one of the things that strikes like now, uh, before having this interview, I had to uh, get uh, uh, buy let's say 5,000. Uh, MB from MTN, and before tomorrow it will be it will be off oh, five thousand naira. So we need Wi-Fi, we need steady power supply. Mm -hmm. These two things are what the world needs to to be uh, stand by. The world needs it. You don't need to uh, say, oh, I had an interview. I wanted to discuss with someone, but I don't have uh, an internet in my phone. Right. So you don't just say that. It's crazy. And sometimes if I don't have uh, a mobile data in my phone or uh, in my uh, laptop, I feel as if I'm closed up. I'm out of the world. I'm shut out of the world. And that is what uh, Yuval Noah Harari was talking about in his work, Homo Deus, when he talked about dataism. So you say that. So these are visionaries. Mm -hmm. And when, when you come down to Nigeria still, there are so many of them, but I'm just mentioning a few that the world needs to look at. Like, absolutely. I don't know if you, you can connect with him. He's a great man. Mm -hmm. He's a great man. He's well known for microelectronics, medical robotics, uh, neuromorphics, semiconductor invention, and microelectronics. He's, he's vast. He can speak on any, he's very vast. I follow him always on LinkedIn. He's very he's smart. And he uh, taught it um, uh, at the uh, um, Federal University of Science and Technology, Oweri, and also um, something John, um, so did in U.S. too. He did his uh, master's and PhD in U.S. And he's also here in Nigeria. And we have President Muhammad Buhari as the number one citizen. He's somewhat repulsive. 
understand. It calls for critical reflection. So, these persons, they are in Africa, but Africans, African, and people in other parts of the world don't talk about them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, you've, uh, if you know this lawmaker, um, Nigerian senator, um, senator Ben Morris Bruce. No. Ben Morris Bruce. Ben Morris Bruce is the only futuristic senator, lawmaker we have in Nigeria. Hmm. He started using electric car as far back as 2013. Okay. So, he said, since two years ago, he's been talking about making the, he's been talking about electric car and trying very hard for the government to implement the usage of electric, car, el electric cars. But do you know what they, they, they have said last year? They said that, that the man don't even, doesn't even understand what he's talking about because he's not even thinking the other way that if they say, okay, let's be using electric car to affect the, the fuel business. Mm -hmm. So at the expense of the, um, um, the fuel business, we should live in a redundant based society <laughs> that won't yes because of that their own self-centered interest mm -hmm. we should live there they don't know that when you create business environment there will be a perfect competition new ideas will be coming and you create jobs and opportunities for, for people All right so yeah. they don't know that so now ben Maurice bruce that time wrote on twitter that now um, countries are now making use of electric um, airplane so you are still struggling to implement the usage of um, electric cars mm -hmm. and people are using electric cars. people are using there is no speed train in Nigeria there is no speed train in Nigeria okay no 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 train connects any country to the other in Africa mm -hmm. so okay uh, Rwanda, they've started using electric cars. They use electric cars in Rwanda. You see, when you check Kigali, you will see where people park there. So that's one thing I like about the president. When you have a visionary leader, a leader that is futuristic, a leader that understands what is needed at a particular, uh, at a particular point in time, mm -hmm. that's the real leader. And that's... And that's um... That, that's, that's what we all need, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Coming back now sort of to Rwanda for a moment. Um, and, and, you know, you started with some great examples and ended up with, with an excellent example there. Um, take us a little bit now into the conference. Um, give us, you know, a little bit of the background, you know, how you got it started, uh, how you put the team together, and then obviously who's going to be there and, and the range of topics you're going to be discussing because it's truly a, a wide swath of experts from from all over the world that are coming. The main purpose of this conference is to launch Africa to prepare them for the fourth industrial revolution. I want people to understand that mm -hmm. because we are not even <laughs> we are not even ready for the third industrial revolution. But I know some persons are talking about fifth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. And you see, most people talk about, I don't know if you've tried to just suppose this idea of leapfrogging. I think this conference can strike that, mm -hmm. can make them to leapfrog. And people will be surprised where Africa will skyrocket to. You see, it takes, it takes, it takes to transform, but a little, a little uh, education can help faster. You know, education is simply means leading out of ignorance. And people who have gathered to talk 
in this conference, they are not children in their field. They are experts. Sure. Okay. Look at you now. You'll be speaking. Look at Aubrey de Gay. We'll be speaking. <laughs> we have people. We have people who are going to. We have the likes of the, 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 the a young Nigerian, Augustus Chuku, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, introduced the individually prepared growth theory. Individually prepared growth theory that's making way. No. <laughs> this theory can solve, this principle can solve the, 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 the problem of economy the economic problem in Africa. So we talk about, when you talk about governance, mm -hmm. they are saying, okay, we are practicing democracy, we talk practicing democracy. So you are practicing democracy, you don't talk about regional democracy. You don't talk about true federalism. You don't talk about anything. You don't want to do what you want is, okay, um, we are Nigeria, we are giants of Africa. We are better than this country. You are giants of nothing. You, you need to move. So, but this conference is not for any country. This conference is for Africa and other developing countries because we are inviting people coming from India, mm -hmm. people are coming from Estonia, people are coming from all parts of the world. So we're talking about, we're talking about what we are talking about here is uh, um, the conference that we have to transform what developing and underdeveloped countries. And the main themes that we're going to talk about is we are going to talk about futurism, transhumanism, and don't forget that this uh, conference is part of the October longevity, longevity movement. Mm -hmm. So now we, 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 we talk about, um, um, okay, during this conference, there will be also a tech and biotech exhibition. So that's how we structured it. So, the first, we're going to talk about leadership and governance and all that. I said people who took permission that want to speak remotely, people who want to speak remotely, or they are day um, um, falls on the first day, they can talk mm -hmm. remotely, they can present remotely. So we're talking about governance and all that. So the, and the title of the conference, you know, the Conference of Techno-Scientific Awareness in Solving 21st century problems. Want to solve? Yes, we need to do that because most countries, most countries in Africa are still in their peristyle state. Okay. Imagine living in a society where there is no electricity. There are many places in Nigeria that let's say they've not seen electricity before they haven't seen it they see it only when they travel when they migrate so somehow crazy and someone is writing a budget and you are doing budget, budget paddling i think when you talk to because we are targeting this conference is going to be mind-blowing mm -hmm. we met with um the youth leaders in the countries in various countries and we gathered, we gathered over, uh, we gathered over 28 million youth um, email database. Okay. Email database. And we are inviting them for the conference. It's not, it's not a truth because it was strategically planned. Sure. So we need, we need people to support us. We need people. We need support. We need support because we've written to. Um, the Singularity University, and they are not saying anything. I've written to so many institutions, Creonics Institute, I've written to, um, uh, the, what is his name? Um, this man, the, the co founder of uh, Singularity University, uh, Ray Cruzwell. I've okay. written to Ray Cruzwell, he's not responding. I've written to so many bodies. I've written to uh, Lifeboat Foundation. So we need people, we need, we need support, mm -hmm. we need moral. We need moral support. We need um, uh, media support. We need uh, financial support. Because most students, they can't afford to feed themselves. The most important thing is to sell the idea. I'm not about them because here, this is a non-profit or non-governmental organization. 
and the CEO is only struggling, Christopher K. Holley, the vice president of Life Boat Foundation. He helped in registering TFDS in the United States of America, Georgia, uh, said to be precise, Georgia. So he helped in registering it legally, and he helped in doing so many things. I have been also pursuing this course and helping me. If I'm not there, he's there. So, and my teams, and all in the team, they are all volunteers. Just doing great job. So no one is paid. We have experts. Our CTO is from India. Same from, we have people from US, but, but now we've tried to stretch our tentacles. Um, recently, I talked about having ambassadors, people representing TFDs in various countries. So we have, we've got this, uh, someone, Cameroon, we've got this, someone, Egypt, we've got this, someone, Estonia, and that. We want to stretch, we want to move. Because after this conference, we're moving to Asia. Okay. We're moving to Indonesia to be precise. So it's not the joke because those we are planning this so that before <clears throat> 2022, we have our first summit. We have our first summit. And if you go through our website, you see that these are just the means, some, some of the means that we want to use in um, transforming the world. We, we, we talked about giving our, we have TFDS team, mm -hmm. but we need to set the background very well right. to have a strong foundation so that people will see meaning in what we're doing. So, and that is part of the power of conviction that you are capable of doing what you want to do. So we, we need to give our word also to encourage people. Okay. In Nigeria, they started BB Niger of uh, but then. So we had to do all sort of nudity and whatever, and they give 20 million naira to the first person. Well, as the first, uh, first class mm -hmm. graduate is given 10,000 naira in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Why an award, uh, award winner of an entertainment industry is given mm -hmm. 20 million? So it's, it's just a uh, uh, <laughs> uh, travesty of everything. So you see how it's happening. So. What I'm struggling is this. When we get a good bond, we give our word because we, uh, the, at the end of this year, we're going to have a TFDS, um, a TFDS magazine that will publish the five best presidents, uh, five best uh, um, media house. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at so many things, publish five best scientists, five best futurists, Five best this create their message. Let the message go. Right. Let the message go around the world. So we're going to have thrillers for the for the award. We're going to have thrillers show it. Then people run commentaries why they are the best there. So we interview them and we gather it together and make it a documentary. So it's a great task and we need um, strong hands come on board and to help. So you see, it's something I started after uh, my graduation. I started TFDS and I had nothing with me. What I've been keeping me is the vision and the dream. It's a, yeah. it's a fascinating vision and um, it, must, <laughs> it must feel wonderful seeing it. I mean, obviously there's, there's struggles and uh, resource requirements, but it's coming together. One thing we, we typically do on the show, um, uh, you know, after we talk a lot about the uh, the science and technology and the the operational components of what our guests are involved in, we sort of move away from that, uh, sort of back to you, um, and um, ask a uh, a question. Of, you know, this is this is more focused on you and your interests. And obviously, I'm really going to be looking forward to your answer on this one. But we typically ask our guests. You know, you've met obviously a lot of very interesting people throughout your, your time uh, sort of out there on the road doing this. Um, but I wanna pose a question to you uh, now about um, who you, uh, Osinakachi, would have wanted to meet. And now this is, uh, it, this can be anybody. This could be a philosopher, this could be a, a business person, a scientist, an artist, whomever, historical figure. Um, you know, if you had the ability to go in my hypothetical time machine over here uh, and travel and, and meet somebody um, that inspired you, um, that you never had the chance to meet, obviously, who for you 
would that person be? Um, and what would you want to talk to that person about? The first person I would like to meet is uh, Aubrey de Grey. Okay. Um, uh, why, why am I interested in meeting Aubrey with this? Aubrey talks about cryonics. He talks about his aging and all that. I think it's not really looking at the other side of cryonics. It's not really looking, about, uh, looking at what it will cost the world. In my last interview uh, uh, with the future, Futurist New Deal podcast, mm -hmm. I talked about, I said, Karl Marx, Karl Marx was talking about classless society. Mm -hmm. And he talked about class struggle. But some of the scientific or the transhumanist um, inventions or ideology or prophecies, if not checkmated, could lead to what uh, could lead to not just class struggle, could lead to societal struggle, continental struggle, and country struggle. So I think we need to think of making this accessible, like some of the aging drugs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the cryonic stuff and all that, accessible to people. I think uh, the, the second person um, I would have loved uh, to meet is um, Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. I wanted to ask him some few questions about why he never talked of privacy in his Facebook and WhatsApp creation. And why is it that no one can totally delete something from Facebook hmm. and WhatsApp? I want to ask him this, to, these two questions. And it poses a um, challenge on some persons and considering how the world is going, very soon people will start selling information, information buying and all that, information biz the business. People can dig your file and sell it out. Mm -hmm. Someone hacks into this and sell it out. Why is it that we don't have that our, <clears throat> our privacy as a human person. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever I look at someone's uh, profile on Facebook, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, I normally say something about BioQuark. I don't know what it's all about. <laughs> the, the, the man talking about, talking about BioQuark and he's interested in aging and all that. And the man only had one single picture as profile picture on LinkedIn and Facebook and all. They say, the rap pastor he talks about biocrack. I found, was, I don't know. I've not really understand what biocrack is all about. He's someone that someone needs to meet. And uh, I would love to meet the last, uh, but not the least, Joanne from the, the, the founder of Sidekick. But I just mentioned four persons that I would love to meet. But someone really that said in Nigeria, Igbo, to be precise, they said behind any uh, successful man lies someone so, so, so behind a successful one, like someone behind pushing, propelling, motivating. I think, I think that I'm speaking to you now is through the efforts of Christopher K. Halley. He is a benefactor to me. And okay. whatever I do, I always remember him. And if I call him and he doesn't pick, I feel scared. 
Is this is he alive? What is what what's happening to him? I'm concerned about him. Um but I've not gotten the chance to see him face to face, meet him face to face. With the last time we tried, it failed. We tried twice. He sponsored everything, but the stupid policy that I'm not married. So they denied me visa. I don't know the Trump policies and it's quite crazy when you have such uh, policies judging using the using a part to justify the whole single story problem where you get a single story you tag it with people use it to tarnish the image of people and he said because the nigerian 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 african africa so i'm not i get i'm irritated about some of all those things i'm glad that i've met americans who are open who really want to hear who who doesn't segregate who doesn't practice sectionalism mm -hmm. and they are they really they really want to learn from the other brothers they see people as their brother they see all those from the other parts of the world as the brother so, so that is just a kind of uh, <laughs> consolation just like reading the consolation of wishes <laughs> that, that, that's that's a, uh, a a nice way to to think about it, and then same here that you know we have the ability to meet people like you and see how you're transforming the continent, and it's uh, inspiring, and it's what this show is all about. It's all about ideas uh, and the future. Once again, um, for everybody listening and watching today, we've been talking uh, with Osana Kachi Okuma Kalu, who was the founder and chairman of the Transdisciplinary Agora for Future Discussions from October 7th to the 11th this year. Uh, they were holding the Revolutionary International Conference of Techno-Scientific Awareness and Solving 21st Century Problems. We're going to have all the links uh, to him and his conference and, and other initiatives and his books uh, on the, the blog page, but uh, truly uh, a fascinating story. And from the show to you, thank you, as we say, for moving the human story forward, because that is definitely what you're doing. And um, we'll be looking forward to seeing more of you and obviously <laughs> talking more with you as the conference gets closer. So really, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I'm grateful. Uh, thank you for inviting me.